Good morning. Good morning, Cass. How are you? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I miss I miss doing this. I know. I love I love when we get together and do this. Our new year. Last one we did was back in 2020, so it's our first one of 2021. It is, and um, we're doing something pretty vulnerable today, right? This is not in our norm. <laughs> we are. I think it's something we can talk about for a while, but it's uh, you know more about us than you know us talking about stuff that we know about the real estate market. I know we were a little nervous about it. We were like, well, "Why? What are we doing?" But <laughs> we do get those questions a lot, like, "Right? How did you guys get into real estate? How did you How did get, we get together? Yeah. How do we get together? How do we grow?" and um, why do we think real estate was a good fit for us? So we get a lot of those questions. Yes. So today we're going to talk about how Distinct Home grew, how it became, how what it is today. Yes. So I have a couple questions. I'm going to start off asking Ina so we can, she's the founder of Distinct Home Group. So we're going to start off with her. So Ina, when did you first know that you were really interested in real estate? Uh, so we're gonna like dive right into it. You're just gonna ask. We are. There's nothing. You're, you're like, let's do it. <laughs> okay. So really quick, just one more thing to add. Um, obviously, Ina Robin here, as, as Cassie said, founder of um, Distinct Home Group. Uh, I've been in real estate for almost 17 years now, so um, it's been a, a long, amazing journey, and I cannot wait um, to share my story. And I know a lot of people do know, but there's a lot of people that don't. So I'm excited to talk about it. And then hopefully inspire somebody if they want to get into real estate. Um, it's a pretty amazing industry. So that's it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be asking Ina lots of questions about her journey and about real estate and what she does, how she got there. If you have any questions, mm -hmm. put them in the comment section. We'll be, I'll be trying to keep an eye out for them. Or we always watch the videos later, comment after the video, and we will definitely see them or send us a private message. So we this will be so much more fun. fun. I I feel like it'd be so much more fun if people like ask questions. Like you can yeah. ask anything, like random. Like, what do I like to eat for breakfast? <laughs> what do I like anything. Anything. What's my favorite car? It doesn't even have to be real estate related. Anything and everything. No anything you want to know? It's today. Well, maybe we should give it a little bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, it's not only for me. If for on a serious note, it's also for Cass. Cass and I have been together for a long time. We're we, we come together as a package at this point. So if you have any questions for Cass, she will answer. She's not, she's not as talkative as I am about my, you know, talking about herself. So she might be a little more reserved. I'll have to push her. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here to answer. All right. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. Let's, let's dive into questions. I'm ready. All right. While you're starting to answer your questions, I'm going to pull up Facebook in case we do get any questions. Okay. Awesome. What are you, are you drinking coffee today? It is. I have some coffee and a, a shake in here. So nice. Yay. Oh yeah, you did tell me about those, how you mix the protein with with uh, coffee. Yes. Yeah, nice. No, mine is just traditional boring coffee. Just black. <laughs> I think the whole world knows that I just drink black boring coffee. <laughs> That's a lot of people do. Yeah. All right. So Ina, how did you um know you were really interested in real estate? Traditional boring coffee. What? Oh, do you hear a little echo from your i was pulling up our video so now we're good okay good <laughs> all right so let me answer that question first of all i'd really i think about it and analyze all time because i think i'm in the most perfect perfect industry for me i am so happy i love it i can't imagine anything else so as i get older i analyze and i think about it because a lot of younger generation asks because they see what I do and they think it's cool. And I'm trying to see how can I, you know, how did I know what I wanted? So I'm going a little bit further back. I swear it's not going to be a long story, but I look back when I was, I think really, and it was not at that time I did not know, but now looking back, it was almost like fate for me to become a realtor or be in real estate industry. Because I don't know if you, Cassie, knew that, but my parents, when I was around 13, 14 years old, were selling their house and bought a new construction home. Um, so when they went through that journey, they were trying to sell their house for, I think, about a year and a half and couldn't sell it with multiple different realtors. And they bought a new construction. So I'll talk about that as well, how I fell in love with new construction through that process. But the, ultimately, after a year and a half at age of 13, believe it or not, and I know it's a cheesy story and a lot of people might say, yeah, right. 
I actually sold their house. <laughs> I sold their house at 13 years old and how I did it, which is unbelievably unsafe. Don't ever do it. Don't tell your children to do that. Um, it was a little bit different times. I think they were safer. I don't know. Maybe I was just crazy. Um, but I was playing outside with my my friend, just literally in the front yard. I was, I mean, I was 13, so whatever. We were, um, I don't, my parent, nobody was home. It was just me and my, my friend. Um, and a car pulled up with a family. So that made it look normal, mom, dad, and a child. And they said, this house was for sale before. Do you know if this house could be for sale again or they're interested in selling? I said, yeah, my parents always want to sell. Let me give you a tour. <laughs> I bring these strangers into our <laughs> house <laughs> and give them a tour of our home. And looking back, and honestly, I remember exactly what I was saying about the closet and how I use that closet and where my grandma stayed and where all, like told them the whole story of the house. Well, long story short, they ended up buying that house the next day and my parents were able to move. So oh I don't know if you knew that, Cass, but that was I my story. I didn't know that story. Yep. Um, and um, obviously at that time, there was no other connection except for my parents were really happy and it was a bragging story to a lot of people. So then we were moving out uh, more south and my, my parents bought a new new home. And this is where, again, later on I realized it was faith because I was not a typical 13, 14 year old girl because there was a model home down the street because it was new construction. So like a typical, there's a model home and construction being built. And yeah. my parents were one of the first ones to build in that community. So the model was there. There's actually two models with two different builders there for a very long time while we were living there. I am not joking. Instead of having fun with my friends when they would come visit me and like talk about who knows what, I would give them a tour of both of those model homes every time. <laughs> Anybody that came over to my house, I would say, let's go. I'm going to give you a tour of this house. It's so pretty. And they're like, I just can't play with you. I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to see picture house. that though. <laughs> you got to see this house. So I would go and show them this model home. And I remember this salesperson kept looking at me going, this is such a weird girl. She's here like all the time giving tours to people. So that was the story of new construction where I think I, not on purpose, but fell in love with new homes. Um, and then when I um, went to, um, I graduated from Kent State. So my senior year, um, I went and interviewed with different companies. I, I was very proactive, uh, ambitious kid my whole life, including when I was in college. So I started interviewing really, really early. And my major was very general. So just like a typical 20 some year old kid, I don't know what I want. What am I gonna use this major for? And I'm like applying for different random jobs out there, not knowing what and where I wanna go. Back to fate and how things happen. So follow that, it's really interesting. So I'm driving with my mom, my dad. At that point I was already married, my husband. And we're going on Twinsburg Road, if anybody knows in, Twi in uh, Northfield uh, Township area. And my parents are going, we are going to be downsizing from that big house that I grew up that they, they bought and built. Um, and there's a little community that has a little ranch that we heard about it. Let's stop by there. We're passing by and look at it. So we stop by this little ranch and it's us. My parents ultimately not, did not buy anything. They were not ready to downsize, but I met a girl named Laura Carlson. So if she listens to this, um, just shows how you never know who you can connect and what stories you can change with people. So I meet Laura Carlson, who's a sales representative for this builder at this adorable little ranch model. And I just was beyond in love with what she was doing, how she was doing the process, how personable she was, how sweet. And I'm like, I don't know if she gets paid or she does it as a volunteer. I don't know anything about it, but it's really, really cool. So I left. I was, you know, we left. We um I got her card just like a normal business card. A few months later, as I'm interviewing different jobs, I'm going through college, I'm like, I'm going to reach out to Laura Carlson. So I call Laura Carlson, who I saw one time, right, <laughs> at the model home. I'm just thinking now that I've been in the industry, how creepy that is. And I say, <laughs> hey, my name is Ina. Do you remember me? And Laura, and I know her, she's my dear friend now. She's just such a, honestly, she probably didn't remember me, but she's just so like nice. She's like, yeah, of course, blah, blah, like went through this whole thing. And I go, do you mind if I take you out to lunch and like ask you more about your industry you're in? I can't believe she went to lunch with me. Like I would have been thinking it's really creepy, right? <laughs> so she went to lunch with me and for like two hours, I had my little notepad and I was just asking everything about her job and this and her enthusiasm for it was so addicting. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to sell new homes. I love this. So that's my journey of how I got into real estate. I was 22 years old. I graduated college and my first job, I graduated on Thursday and on Monday morning, the following week, I started my job with a big national builder as a sales rep. 
I love that she made that impression on you that you wanted to go back and like learn more about that. I love yeah. that. I specifically wanted to share that because I think it just, we as humans, we don't realize how much impact we have with our, you know what I'm saying? With our first impressions. It was just a first impression. She just like, yeah. she was a person and she changed my life. She changed my life and my career and everything because she was so awesome. She was so awesome. And she, and what she was so awesome about it was she was natural and she loved what she was doing. And I said, I think I'm gonna love what she's doing too. So, so that's how I became a sales rep for a builder. And then how long did you do that for? Yeah, so I love that that job, that company, everything about it. I still have all my closest, closest people and friends from that from that world. I feel like that world has created me and made me who I am today. And that's how Distinct Home Group happened. So we'll talk about it towards the end. Um, but I, um, I was there for a total of 10 years. So I started in 2004. It's a great question, by the way. That's a very important part. 2004. Yeah. And I left um, the builder and became a traditional realtor, in which we are today, in 2014. So I think that era of time is pretty interesting because anybody that follows real estate and knows real estate, 2004 was a really, really, really hot market. Um, and honestly, I used to pinch myself and go, I can't believe this is a job. <laughs> it's fun. People just walk in and they just want to buy. I just have to be nice and talk to people. This is easy peasy. Um, so that was 2004. 2005 was still pretty awesome. 2006, things start changing a little bit. 2007, people were being let go every day and downsizing. And then 2008, the world knows the market was like whoosh, explosion. So I was with the builder from 2004 to 2014. Never had a gap. And um, I think that's pretty great story and I'm really, really proud of it because it, I feel like 2004 was awesome and fun, but really what made me the, the, I feel like the level of a realtor that I am today is the tough markets of 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010 and 11. I mean, the recovery started around, you know, 12, 13 is that you had, you, the strongest and the best had to survive. I mean, people were being let go every day. Realtors were getting out of the industry. I think at that yeah. time, so currently we have um, almost 11,000 realtors in Northeast Ohio. In 2008, don't quote me, but I believe when I, from my memory, there was under 2,000 realtors in North, Northeast Ohio. Wow. So everybody was getting on a way and running away because there was no way of making money uh, or forget money, just surviving. Um, yeah. And then new construction, almost a lot of the builders went under, you know, out of business. I was very fortunate that I was with a company that was very strong and knew how to regroup through that market. But even in that market, the salespeople that were working in those markets also were not everybody were able to survive. So a lot of people were let go or they quit. What do you feel like you did differently to be able to stay in the business? Yeah, um, I, so I had a, a mentor, um, if he's listening, his name is uh, Dave Langley. He's retired now. He's, he's under actually Dave the Retired Man now, I think is his name. Um, super inspirational man, super smart. He was actually a teacher his all pretty much his life. And then probably in his 40s, changed his industry and went into real estate and became extremely successful in the new construction world. But one of the things he said, and I always remember those words that he said to me because I used to always be confused too. And what am I doing? You know, what am I doing different? And he said, Ina, you're probably one of the best problem solvers I've ever found in my life. I have never seen. And I was like, in a way, happy that he said that. And I was like, oh, now at least I know. But it's kind of disappointing. I'm like, that's all I am. There's nothing else you can say about me. <laughs> I thought there were so many other great things that made me so awesome. But it was my problem solving skills because yeah. people that came to me um, in the 2007, 2008 market, A, I needed to regroup, right? And not just dwell on the negatives of the market. Um, and some people who know me very close, they, they joke around, you know, you lived in your own bubble at that point because when people used to ask me in 2008, how is the market? I'm like, market is great. <laughs> and they're like, what bubble are you living in? I'm like, Ina's bubble. Ina's bubble. And the reason I, I said that, I really meant it. I wasn't really, I wasn't trying to be over, you know, is because I was number one salesperson in the region. I was in the top in the country at that time. I had one of the 
best numbers I've ever had in my career. I made more money in 2008 than I made in any other market, you know, of, you know, a, a new construction world. So my bubble was amazing. But what made that bubble is because I focus not on what is bad, but more that people still are living and people still are getting married and people are still getting divorced. Unfortunately, people are still having babies. Life was still going on yeah. in the rest of the market of 2004 and in 2008, life was still going on. So I really, really focused on that the one or two bodies that I saw in a month they were there for a reason. And if I could understand their reasoning for why they were with me and I could problem solve whatever it was that they had, because most of them did have problems. That was the, the trick, right? They wanted to buy, they, they needed to move, they were getting married, but I needed to know. So I became very knowledgeable in financing, in 401ks and all these things that had nothing to do with a traditional realtor or salesperson's job in the industry. Uh, but that's what the tool that I needed to have. And that's one of the things I always say when people ask me who are younger, who are getting in the industry, you know, what, what do you need to do? And I say, you need to have a lot of different things in your tool belt. doesn't mean you have to use them all at one time and overwhelm people with them, but you have to have the tools and the right tools can be used at the right time. And at that time, I learned very quickly that my tool and what I need to know is, um, is financing and learning how to help people with the financial situation so they can buy my beautiful home because it was, it was easy to sell the product. The product was a beautiful home that was new, that was clean, that had all new toilets and warranties and beautifully staged. Like, what was there not to like, right? And I think we've always had the conversation when I first started working with you about the tool belt. You you yeah. said the exact same thing to me. And I think even to this day, that's one of your strong suits with, you know, the buyers and sellers that we work with is problem solving whatever needs to be done for them. Yep. You got it. And understanding people's situation at that point, yeah. you know, when you really understand and you care, adding things to your tool belt, that's just resources. You're just finding things that you can provide them at that point. So, and I like to make things easy for people. I think that's the other thing. So yeah. make it easy for people. If you, if you make it easy and provide them what they need, why not? They're there anyways, right? Yeah. Can I answer the question? I feel like I was like my typical way, like, where? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it's kind of now we're into your journey. So yeah. what happened after you left the big builder? Yes. So just like everybody, and I, and I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. It's like when you're part of a family or a community, and in my case, this was this builder. This is all I knew. I knew him since 22 That's years a old. Long time. Yeah, I grew up with them. I grew up with them. I was, uh, I started, like I said, at 22 and left at 32, right? That's a like a very different human that I started with. And when I, when I left there and um, two things I want to add, and I hope this, this is coming across as um, me being really real and hopefully helping somebody who is in this place where they're not feeling like things are right, but they're nervous. Um, so for eight years, I did pure sales job for Ryan Holmes. That was the builder that I worked for. Um, and I served all of Northeast Ohio and all different communities, the most difficult communities, the easiest communities, the most expensive communities. I started projects that were failing. It was just like that they were failing and I had to you know, fix them. That was my favorite thing to do. I was the happiest person for eight years. And then what a lot of people think in a normal way that how we were, you know, how are people I think are taught and raised is that there's a journey and you have to grow and you have to, you know, go into different place. And of course, I'm like, well, I can't do sales for, you know, forever. I need to go up the ladder. I need to become a manager for this company. And I remember, again, my amazing mentors and friends till this day were like, oh, you know, stay in sales. You are so happy. You do so well. And I was happy. I loved it. You don't want the manager job. That's like not you. It's not your, you know, that's not your skill set. Like in a nice way, they didn't say that. Just they don't want to hurt my feelings. Um, you know, don't go that route. And I'm like, they're just trying to stop me from becoming successful and they don't want me to grow in that journey, you know? So of course I'm like, I'm going to prove them wrong. So I, I studied for it. I took courses. I showed them how I wanted and I applied for the sales manager job. And I didn't get it with the first try because they really knew that I shouldn't do it. And the second try, they were like, shit, she's going to really like drive us crazy. Let's give her this opportunity. So I became a sales manager for the builder and I did that for, two years, but it was really about a year and a half by the time I was done with my training and everything. And it was just really interesting to see how when somebody's not happy or not in the right fit, 
they're not as successful. They don't have that. They don't exude. And in that two years, everybody around me felt that I was not being me, even though I worked nonstop. I did everything yeah. I possibly could. I, I, I had no life the same way. I, I focused on it all the time. I wanted to help, but I didn't have the right skill set for that position. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because that was the first time really in my life that I felt like I failed. I really did. Like, I, if you ask me in my life, where have you, because I was always that kid that like pushed through everything and got everything and nothing was ever easy to me, but like I, I made it happen. You know, I wanted it, I worked for it and I got it. Same thing happened here and I become a manager, my dream job, and this is my journey. And I realized that I'm unhappy. I'm not doing that great. And I'm failing. I'm failing everybody around me. So I met with my division managers uh, at that time who I remember that conversation where we were at Panera Bread and they, they, they said, they said, this is, this is the hardest and toughest conversation we're going to have with you, but we can tell you're not happy. We can tell you're not doing this. And I came home and I was so sad and feeling like a failure. I've never had anybody had conversations with me like this, right? I've only had conversations of you're a superstar. You're so great. You are awesome. And I said, oh my goodness, I failed. And at that moment, I felt like a loser. I felt like I failed my family. I failed everything. But then I got the other side. And this is where the difference when people like, if you hear the stories that went down and I got up, you know, when you read inspirational <laughs> stories, that at that point, then I got like this urge of, I don't want to say anger, but like I'm going to prove that I am meant for real estate, but just in a different way, in a different way. If that didn't happen, like if that part of the journey, if I stayed and just complacent and comfortable in my sales role, right, for, I would have still been there and there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Yeah. If I didn't become real with myself that I was truly unhappy and not the best me and somebody didn't tell me the truth to my face as hurtful as it was and how angry I was that you don't seem happy. This doesn't seem right. You know, that lowest moment allowed me to get this urge of, I'm going to kick booty and I'm going to show the world what it is. And that's when I became a realtor. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you knew that too, Cass, that whole, that whole thing of what caused me to say, I'm going to. No, not, the, not that last, the ending part of being with the, the builder. Yeah. Not all those details. Yeah. No, it was, it was, I mean, it was still great in there, but, but sometimes, you know, those hardest moments and the hardest conversations are the ones that either really push you down and you just start being a victim and feeling like, right. what did I do wrong? And blah, blah, blah. And I went through that. Everybody goes through that for a second, but that has to happen for a second, right? Like that's, that's where, you know, if I can provide any boost of motivation here is that use that energy towards really figuring out what and who you want. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't have enough strength to leave a very comfortable world where I had yeah. 401k and I had insurance and I was making good six figures and I had the support and I had my friends and I had the love. How the heck do you get up and leave that? Something almost had to like, God had to me like lead me to like that role and have me fail in that role to push me. And I call it fail. It wasn't fail. You know what I'm saying? Like push, put me in a place where to get me to have the strength to, to go on, you know, and, and start what today is distinct home group, which I'm the most proud of. I am too. <laughs> You're like, good job. Ian. I'm so glad you failed there. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I wouldn't be here today with you if you did. I know. Oh. Yeah. All right. What's our next question? So then, you know, I think your story just keeps going. So you became a realtor and yes, you were by yourself at first, right? You just oh, yeah. started off with a single agent. Yep. So I left the builder on, I don't know, June 10th. Um, I started my classes June, you know, 11th or something like that. And I, I go, I go really fast. Once I make a plan, I don't like sit on it. Um, and then um, at that time you had to get your, you know, you have to be in class to get your license. I did it in the most fastest possible way. I sat in classes nonstop. I took my test. And I became a realtor. So very traditional. I got a realtor. I have my license. I took classes. And now what? <laughs> <I'm> like, what <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the reason I say this is because, you know, one of the other reasons we decided to do this today is not only just for me to keep talking about my story and hopefully inspiring people, but we have so many people always, or not always often, I mean, I get a lot of calls saying, 
I love real estate. I think I want to be real estate, but how do I get into it? Yeah. What do I do to get into it? You know, and it's really, really simple in some ways, but it's really overwhelming in others, you know, yeah. and anybody that's listening today, whether you, you know, have a question again now or you're shy, feel free to reach out to Cass and I to just to learn like, what are just the basic steps, you know, of how to get in real estate? And then once you get your license, what are all your options beyond that? So. No, I think that's good. And then the two of us kind of have different backgrounds of how we got into it. So I think that's can go both ways for different types of people. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, it definitely totally different journeys. Yeah. I, I love actually, I'm going to put you on this podcast. I'm going to have you talk. I'm going to have you talk about how I got up to being a real estate agent too. And then we can kind of be like in the same lane and then go from there. Yeah. Come on, let's do this. All right. Okay. So how did you get into real estate? Did you watch a lot of HGTV too? <laughs> <laughs> I admit I did. People, you watched HGTV and you said, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I worked at a factory. I worked at a factory for eight years and you know comfortable there kind of you know my 401k my health benefits you know life insurance i was comfortable i was comfortable there um for eight years and as i was there and i was like i you know watching shows and seeing other people and my parents have the real estate agent that they used for 20 years you know i talked to her and saw her so i was like i think you know i wanted more you know just thinking friends and family. It can just be like a part-time job. Um, Your favorite type of realtors. I would. The typical one. <laughs> definitely wrong. <laughs> and then so bad, you know, I was like, no, get it out of your system. <laughs> yes. No. Part, some people might make it as a part-time agent, but it was, you know, trying to do it. I think I only did like one to three deals, you know, being a part-time agent because the time you're at work, you're, not talking to anyone, you're not getting any training, you're not going to any classes, you're not in the office. So those, especially first starting out, are such a huge disadvantage that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to, I actually left the factory job um, thinking I was going to work part-time somewhere and part-time real estate agent to get more classes in, um, you know, not making as much as I was at the factory you know, definitely scared of, you know, what was going to happen next. Yeah, I was actually taking um, Keller Williams offers an Ignite class. So it's a uh, couple days a week, you're there all day. Um, so I was actually able to go in the office, talk to a couple people, um, met a girl there, we became friends on Facebook, still going through these Ignite classes. She posted on social media that someone that she was looking for an office person. So she was kind you're, of like, you're like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. She was like new in the business too. And like I, from talking to her and I was like, she doesn't do a lot of business. Why is she looking for an office person? Yeah. yeah. So I sent her a quick message and she's like, no, it's not really for me. I'm looking to, you know, start working with this agent, Ina Moravin. So I, uh, Found Ina. I was looking up Ina on social oh, media and <laughs> I love it. <laughs> looking up, you know, the number she did and kind of like about her. Um, so I made the jump. I, you know, reached out to Ina. I think I emailed her at first. Yeah. Um, and then we connected that way. And, you know, initially just kind of set up a short interview. And I think I'm past like when I became a realtor. So I'll get yeah. to how you and I met and then we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I doing it part time. I met with Ina, um, you know, first interviewed with her. She was going to get back to me. I followed up with her like that night or like the next day. And, you know, I think we met again after that. Yeah. And then it kind of, it, that kind of started the ball rolling, but I still had like a test period that I had to go through <laughs> before I actually got hired on. So well, just, to, just to clarify, the one part I don't think you made it clear is that Cass, like, well, you did, but I just wanted to cast yeah. 
her Cass's journey is unusual. And I think what's really cool, and she's not talking about it because mm -hmm. Cass is more modest than she should be, <laughs> is that she realized that doing it part-time and not being committed is not going to get her to be the professional she wanted to be, which she didn't even realize that she wanted that. Like, it's kind yeah. of a weird thing. Like, she knew that, that she knew that there is something out there. And instead of either just keep hitting the, the, the wall of being part-time and doing this and doing that and being a jack of all trades, she took a, I wouldn't say it by any means a step back, but she decided that I need to learn yes. from a different perspective, this industry and become very knowledgeable. And she joined on our team and became my, uh, actually my first official official hire um, as a, you know, really a, a everything, a closing manager, a, you know, marketing. I mean, we were everything. She was at my, my right hand, my left hand, my <laughs> everything, everything on the behind the scenes. So that's yeah. where she started. She started yeah. behind the scenes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> so then I think that's where, you know, for me, being with someone like Ina that I got to learn so much from, you know, doing everything behind the scenes. Are you, you, know, are, you are you saying I was a little better than Ignite class that you took? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you're actually, you're, you're hands on then. And I'm yeah, learning for someone that did. I mean, how much did you, did we do like the first year was like me over a hundred uh, transactions? Yeah. Um, I think we did 88. Oh, okay. But it was, it was, it was a good amount. It was over 17 million and 88. Yeah. And so, you know, learning hands on there, I learned more from that than I, ever, ever would have as a single agent, a part-time agent, you know, and so I'm so thankful for that because yeah. that kind of led me to where I am right now. Yep. So Cass was in that role and my rock in the office and then comes to me one day, she's like, Ina, you look like you're struggling with hiring good salespeople. <laughs> and I was like, that's why, that's why I failed as a sales manager. I don't know what to say. I'm not good at that. Um, and she's like, I, I feel like I'm nervous, but I want to step up and I want to, I want to go into that role in our company. How do you feel about that? I want to be with you. Right. I said, I, yeah. I, 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 we're together. I just want to transition my roles. I remember that when I said to you, I was like, my heart, my heart. <laughs> I'll never forget that conversation. I shut the door. We had a big conference room at the old office and I'm literally like pacing in a circle. <laughs> why, why can't I do this? I know I can do this. <laughs> yeah. And not that I had any doubt with Cassie being able to do anything in life, but it was just, we were so finally comfortable and she was finally so trained to do her role. And um, I was just really scared by myself. I'm like, oh, here we go again. But that allowed us to continue to grow, right? Yes. So the point of that was really cool is that I think that um, the state home group and how the growth has happened and where we're at right now doing almost 40 million a year and a lot of transactions and have really awesome little powerhouse team. It was not purposeful. I mean, it was purposeful, but it was not on purpose. Like it was yes. just doing the job and more business coming and having the right opportunities and having the right people and having the right people stepping up at the right time. Right. Yeah. And I think did I, I was in the office role for what, two and a half, three years. Yep. Three years. Yeah. Yep. Three years. And so I said, okay, Cass, you've got a problem with me. We have to hire the next hire and you have to train them. <laughs> You can't leave that role until you train no. that, right? And and Cass, is, in her normal way, she delivered. Yeah. Uh, her, her and I interviewed a lot of people, found our next hire, um, and then Cass did a great job training her. And then once we felt like she was trained enough, that's when Cass, her wings flew and became the realtor and a rock star that she is. So Cass, what what did you what was what did you do yes last year in 2020 as a full time, truly full year first time like where you're in sales, not helping me in office, not doing anything but being in the field realtor. What yeah, I, I transitioned. It was March, March of last year, and I have my little plaque here. I did I think 37 transactions at uh, 5.4 million. 
That was what you did the, the when you did for March. But like, what about in 2020, like last year? Oh, last year. Yeah, last um, year was her first full year. Yeah, my first yeah. full year. It was, um, oh, see, and now I should pull it up on Facebook. Over oh. 40 at over 8 million. Almost <laughs> 43 and almost $9 million yeah. worth of real estate in her yeah. first true full year committed to a full-time realtor. So that's awesome, Cass. Honestly, that's like, my, if I if there's a moment in my life that I'm the most proud of, it's it's you. Honestly, no. you're when it comes down to real estate. I am so proud. I'm so proud that you are not only just amazing human, amazing realtor friend, and you're doing really good. You're doing good. I'm so proud of you. No, that means so much to me. That's everything. Oh, thank you. All right. What other questions do we have? Um. So do you want to do you want to talk about? I know we kind of how you became like a team. So when you were a single agent, when did you know you wanted a team? Yep. So it happened so kind of by by the amount of business I was doing. So my first year, I was a rookie. 2015 was my, 2014 end is when I became a realtor. 2015 mm -hmm. was my first year. And they say that if you do your first year, you know, even 10 transactions, you know, and two, three million, you've, you've already done a really, really good job. You should be proud of it, especially if you're doing it on your own with nothing, no, you know, no, no team, no nothing like that. And I was a rookie of the year, which was really exciting because I love to achieve goals. And I did almost nine million by myself in about forty-one, I think, units. Oh my gosh! And, and it was a lot of work. It was just me, and I knew that I needed to, you know, if I wanted to continue to feed and provide the service that I want, I needed to add people. And I am extremely, everybody knows that about me um, on our team and our team is all hired that way. I am on a high level, high, high level of client care oriented, mm -hmm. right? That yes. either we don't take business or if we do take business, we, we provide a, a very high level support and uh, service to that. So I knew that in order for me to continue to provide the service that I want and to continue to still do my 8 million, which is all I did, I needed to add admin support and that's that's how like Cass story started and she joined and Cass and I remember when we were sitting in our little office in Keller Williams and met her uh no windows no nothing it was no. a little cube in the little hallway <laughs> um, and we're sitting there and it's tiny and it's like you'll see we're gonna look back and we're gonna be like remember that story when we started this tiny little cube together and we're both like ha 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 yeah right oh but whatever we'll keep going <laughs> <laughs> And before you know it, we start adding more support staff, more realtors. Um, some realtors worked out, some realtors didn't. It was a yeah. great learning journey of what do I need to be as a leader? What support do I need to provide? What do we need to offer? How do we capture talented people? How do we keep them and make sure they're happy um, and you know, refocus our, our business of adding more qualified administrative staff and marketing people? Um, and listing specialist, and, and that's how the, the team started growing is because the, there was enough business to support, and I wanted to really yeah. provide a high-level service. I was not happy with um, the typical model that a lot of uh, teams do, which is a lot of agents and minimum admin support. Um, it's just not something I believed in, um, and I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to provide really, really trained salespeople, but even more say support and um even more qualified um behind the scenes people to provide the service that i was looking for so that's what's what that's how we grew to who does this thing come is good right now yes let's see so anybody, anybody want to know like what my favorite color is any questions out there at all <laughs> just our moms <laughs> They're like, I love our baby. We're gonna watch them. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my mother-in-law, she's a. Uh, she wrote something. She kind of asked, um, you know, about a buyer specialist and what exactly a buyer specialist is. Oh, okay, great. Um, and then I'll your mom. I know you longer than anyone else. She's like, I'm yeah. sure that to fly so high, every everybody must knew must do any job sincerely. It is the key to success. Um, Ina, you are great in everything you do. She's my mommy. I love her. <laughs> People ask me why I've, I've always had such confidence in my whole life. Um, you know, and I really think it's because my mom, since I was born, told me how great I was nonstop. Whether I was good or not, whether I was failing or not. She's like, you're amazing. You're so good. So, <laughs> parents, 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 how awesome they are. 
I actually one just came through on the screen. It asked um, how, you know, let's see how, let's see, how do you go back to that? How we like became a, a successful real estate team. I think, uh, let's see where that question is. Two questions. I need to see. Oh, Rick Capretta, I think, is asking questions. I know. How do I? I don't know how to find those questions. They're kind oh. of going by pretty quickly. I've never. What makes you guys a super successful real estate team? Oh, it comes from Courtney. Hi, Courtney, honey. Uh, <laughs> I Number one, we have amazing partners and people who believe in us. So we get tons of. There's a little echo, but is there is your thing on? No, you're, you're good. You're good. Okay. Yeah, I don't hear an echo. So I think it's a combination of things. One, our ability to to really focus on quality of service, mm -hmm. not cut any corners, take a lot of education. We take a lot of classes ongoing from Cassie, myself, our admin staff, our marketing people. So being really educated in the industry. Taking real estate not as a sales job, but a more of a truly service job. And then our job is to understand and help. And I think when you come from that end and you have knowledge, you're genuinely able to help people. But at the end, we can't help people if people didn't trust us, right? And we didn't have such amazing partners, referrals coming in who are asking for our help. So we can't take that away. You know, I could sit all day long how great I am, but if I don't have people that trust and help and send people to us to help, it's really, you know, our business is all referral, right, Cass? It's, yeah, it's like it's, we care about our team. We care about our clients. You know, we care about the process for them. So I think, you know, that brings the referrals in too because they can see that. Correct. Yeah, it, it is. I, I was talking to Hannah, um, our marketing girl, and she was putting together her 2021 marketing plan and this and that. And I go, I'm like, Hannah, what do you think? Why? What do you like when she was writing? I'm like, why do you think that? Like, what makes us good? Like, what what makes us who we are? And she did say that she said the same thing. It's because we genuinely care about people. It's cheesy as it sounds is but it is. That was her. That was her takeaway with being with us for what it is, is that we take care of people you know, when we meet them, we take care of people during the process. We deliver on what we say. I know it sounds so simple, right? But yeah. how many times you hire people and they promise you the world and what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and they fail. They don't deliver on what they say. So we, we come in with a care. We problem solve. We, if there's a problem, we put a plan together. We put a really good plan together, a plan that, you know, that we know works. And then we execute on that plan and we guide our clients to the to the end result. And then the results are there because people trust us through that process that we believe in so much that happens. So Court, I hope that answers your questions. It's 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 our care for people and then delivering on, on the tons of knowledge that we have. Yes. So there's the other question. Good morning, ladies from our Caprata. Two questions. What piece of advice would you give to a new agent deciding to be a solo agent? or on a team and what is the most important thing for a first time home buyer to know rick we're already way past our time are you kidding <laughs> it's gonna be like a two-hour response <laughs> <laughs> right great question uh we're, we probably should do a whole session on it because i do think there's a lot of people that do love real estate and do want to get into it and would want to know a lot of those yeah. details We'll answer it on a very quick, just because of time here, but we, sh we should do another Q&A about that and spend more time. Kaz, do you want to try to answer it or do you? Can I do the first time home buyer one? Yeah. So that one, I think for the most important thing, your pre-approval is your, your first thing that you need to know is, you know, can you be pre-approved and what we're being pre-approved for? And then after that is sitting down with me for a buyer consultation. Look at you. Five years <laughs> later, you learn how to close. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Cass. <laughs> um, it's true. It's meeting with, a, yeah. you know, getting pre-approved and then meeting with the right agent who's going to have a roadmap and lead you to the successful story that we're hoping for all our clients. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give a new agent deciding to be a solo agent or on a team? Like, so both People who are not in the industry are kind of confused, like, 
what does it really mean solo agent or being on a team or what does that mean? You know, what is all that? So being a solo agent, just to be very simple, it's really what you'd probably know the most when there's a one realtor that does everything. It's the person who helps you, you know, with the actual transaction, with the paperwork, with the, you know, closing process, with the listing process, if they're listing your house with all the communication. Um, and, um, that and the buy side, it could be listing, selling, because the one person's doing everything. Correct. If you're not a specialty like Cass and I are, which are very specialized, I'm, I focus on listings. She focuses on the all our buyer kind clientele. You are really spread thin and you do everything. But there's nothing wrong with it. I think if you're a personality of, um, I don't need anybody to tell me, and I, I, I like being in control and I want to go at my own pace, I think being, being a solo agent is wonderful. It's a great industry. And um, if somebody's deciding, you know, the, the, the things that people often ask, you know, how do I you know, know this is the right thing? And very often when I ask, well, I don't know, how do you know? Like, what do you know? And then they're, you know, they usually go into this whole point of how they love people and they want to help people and all, you know, that's their motivation of it. And that's wonderful. And obviously we talk about it. That's part of our motto, you know, passion and people and all of that. But there has to be a, a next level of uh, responsibility if you want to be a realtor. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize it. And Cass is even a perfect example of a person who got into it, right? Who yeah. take that very lightly. And this is why I don't believe in part-time realtors. And this is why I don't ever let anybody join our team if they want to be a part-time realtor is because it is not right or fair for our clients or anybody in the industry to be treated by a part-time anything, part-time realtor, honestly, part-time accountant, part-time anything, yeah. anything you're a part-time in, that just means you're not, I mean, your, your other part of your time is dedicated to something else. That means you're not hundred percent focused. Therefore you're not the most professional and you're not providing the quality of service that people deserve in real estate. And unfortunately, very often real estate has a bad rep because too many people can get into it and are not doing it on that level. So my advice to you is if you want to be a realtor and you're just doing it because you love people and you want to help people, I don't think that's big enough reason to get into real estate. It's wanting to get on a high level of service, not a lot of business. You don't need to do a lot of business. That's your, that's your goal. If you're happy with helping five families a year and that makes you happy and it's enough to provide for your family, by all means, great. But you better provide them on a very high level with a lot of knowledge with a lot of experience, you know, not even experience with a lot of, um, a lot of knowledge, just, just really know your stuff before you get into it. And I think that newer agent, if, you know, finding a couple single agents, finding a couple teams and having a conversation. Yeah. That's another great advice. So not all teams, every single team you will, if you're thinking of joining real estate and you think team is a better environment, cause you really don't know anything and you feel like that's a better thing. That's great way to get into the industry and you should definitely interview with several teams that um you know either follow on social media or whatever you get connected yeah. with because every single one is absolutely different and what they do what their motto what their culture um our culture is very specific right and we've tried to add people to our culture that were not part of our culture and we they didn't, they didn't, it didn't work out right yeah. and we were trying to make them into our culture and so make sure that whatever team you join, whatever company you join, make sure it, it fits with your core and your belief system and culture, um, then it would be a good match. Then the learning will happen. Then the helping will happen. All the other factors will happen if you're part of the right, you know, group of people. Yes. Good That's question, cool. Caprata. Yay. <laughs> yes. I got a good question. <laughs> of course, it's coming from my brother. He's like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> it's funny. Um, I think it is a very important question because I am very specific on my favorite I don't think color. I know your favorite color. It's yellow. Oh, that's a good it's, color. It is a good color. And I met with one of your closest friends um, yesterday to be helping, you know, we we're going to be helping them list their house. And as we're talking and she's in a room with like yellow and this and that, and she's like, do you want me to change the bed cover here? I have a different color. She's like, I'm a little crazy. And I go, why? And she goes, I love yellow. And I'm like, now I know why Cass and you are best friends because I love yellow. It's my favorite color. That is her favorite. She has a yellow car. She's She loves yellow. That was her car, yeah. That yellow is mine. Cass, what's your favorite color? Green. 
Green. Yeah. I never knew that too. Alex, that was a genius question. I hope that we learned something we didn't know about each other. Yeah, thanks. I hope that people ask more fun questions like that. Not right. real related. <laughs> Well, I think Hannah, I think was putting the questions up. So I think the questions might be done since she didn't change it. Yeah. So I'll double check. Nothing else on Facebook. So do we, anything else you want to add about how we became the team or do you want me to move into the, the lighter questions that we can kind of end with? Yep. Let's move on. I think we got, I think people know the story. And if anybody wants to know more, I'm always available via phone, via coffee. Let's, let's hang out. I'll love to tell you. Yes. How that open. lunch like you had with the, the rep that you ran into? It is. Honestly, that, Laura Carlson is definitely my, I always have her in my mind. When I, when I have an agent call me or not even an agent or somebody who's looking to, I always think of her and what she made me feel and how she made me feel and what she did right at that moment. So no matter what kind of mood I'm at at that point, I, I don't either answer the call at that point or if I do, I make sure I'm enthusiastic and excited and I tell them the truth, the reality of it. I don't, you know, you know, I don't, I'm almost too honest when it comes down, but I want to make sure people get into it for the right reasons. But yes. I always remember her and what she made me feel and how she made me feel and how she changed my life. If she was a grumpy, annoying human at that point that didn't know her stuff, would I've loved, would I've been excited about real estate? Would I've got into it? No. Right. No. That's how I felt when I met with you. I made you love it mm -hmm. again. <laughs> All right, what's the question? What's the next one? So obviously looking at, you know, you being working with buyers at the beginning and listing houses and me working with buyers, what is our favorite room and houses we go into and why? Oh, that's easy. It's everybody's probably, but it's definitely mine. It's kitchen, 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 yes. kitchen. I love cooking. I, it's a heart of the home. I spend most time and the second one is office because we work from our office. <laughs> office <in the> <laughs> too. <laughs> but kitchen. What about yours, Cass? What's your I, favorite? My, see, I love kitchens too. My husband does more of the cooking than I do, so I just like it for the aesthetics. <laughs> it's no look at the functionality so, of it. <laughs> yes, they're so pretty. They're roomy, and that's where everyone hangs out when we have people over. I also like front porches. Okay, sitting out in the front porch, neighbors watching the kids play. I love a good front porch. Nice. Love yeah. it. What's the next question. Um, let's see. What's your favorite part in working in real estate? It's the people and the love for people. No, it is, but I, I just, just joked around about how you can be like that. Um, I think when you have a personality who would do well in the world of people, whatever it is, mm -hmm. social work, sales, anything like that, obviously the factor of being genuine and caring about people you're working with is a very, very important, right? So yeah. that part is, is really, a, a, you know, just meeting all types of people. I'm fascinated by people. When I go to people's houses, people cannot believe how long I sit in those appointments. And then, like, did you really talk about a house? And I go, no, because I'm really obsessed about learning about them. Like, what do you do? Like, where do you work? What do you do? You know, like yeah. all of that stuff. And there's so many industries that I learned from them that are there. They're like, I didn't know existed like crazy jobs out there. It's like what people do. And I'm like, how did you get into it? So my obsession with learning about people and meeting all types of people, I don't think like that many jobs or careers would allow me to get so intimate with people yeah. as much as real estate does. Because yeah. real estate, because when you're, again, like I was saying, when you're a person of that can work with people, you can sell anything, right? I mean, you, you know, you can sell new homes, Prior to being new construction salesperson and then realtor, as a kid, I was selling, you know, in the, in the early 2000 computers because that was the boom. So I, I that was my product and I did really, really well. So I could probably talk about a lot of different products and do well in, in the bad. But I think what made me stick for 17 years with real estate and why I love it is because I love the product, which is the houses and just being excited about the houses. But I love being exposed to so many different people and merging the house and those people together. Yes. And I think it's, is, everyone's also different. The process is usually different for everyone. And it's, you know, adjusting how we are to work with all those different types yeah. of people. I just I find it exciting. I love doing it. And it's, it's, it's something every day. You can do that. You can talk to a realtor who's been doing this for 40 years and you ask them and they'll go, I learn something new every day. Every yeah. day different so it never gets boring we get to meet new people and other things this sounds crazy but if you meet people that you don't really like or connect really well there is an end 
to it. <laughs> you know? Like, like you're not married to them. You're not yeah. with them either. You know, like I feel like in some other industries and in sales, it's a really service. So you're like dealing with people for years and years and years and years and years, and there's never an end. And if you mm -hmm. have a good people connection, that's great. I kind of like that. Like real estate allows me to like have a beginning end game. And then there's an end game if it's not, you know, I mean, everybody's great, but like not that I don't connect. I don't have to deal with that forever, ever and ever. And they don't have to deal with me because they probably don't like me as much either at that point. Right. But um, majority of people become our close friends, our, our, yeah. clients, our friends, our everything. And they, we, we keep in touch with them for a long time. So overall, yeah. overall, that's the best part. So we'll end on um, our slogan is our passion is people. Our mission is results. How did you come up with that, Ina? Honestly, besides Cassie and being the most proud of Cassie, I'm the most proud of that slogan. And if I see <laughs> anybody stealing that slogan, I'm going to be so mad. So don't do it. I will see it. I will call you. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> all right. So I knew we needed a slogan, right? And in real estate, there's different things. You know, I'm your real estate solution, all this kind of stuff out there. It took me forever i'm not joking probably over five years to come up with those whatever four or five words <laughs> that we came <laughs> up with because what i was doing originally and it took a while to come up with it because what i would do at the beginning is i would write our slogans and they were very long yeah. and descriptive and all of that and honestly i could never remember remember like when we had to like present a new hire and like here's our slogan i'm like yes can you get that piece of paper i gotta read it and i would like get it out and i would <laughs> read our slogan and you know it's not a right slogan mm -hmm. if you have to get that piece of paper out and read it yeah so i went on a journey of what is our slogan what can i connect to what do i what do I really feel like? What defines distinct home group? What What are the most true words that mean if somebody has to describe us? And those words eventually just came to mind because there's no question about it. Everybody knows I love people and I love helping, but I am the most result oriented human you'll ever find. Hundred <laughs> percent. There's no end result for our clients, for our team, for success one way or the other, whether it's an ending because it doesn't work or there's a positivity because it is working. I don't stop. I don't yeah. stop till there's a result. So I think that if I can go back to Courtney's question is what made us as most successful is that we care about people, but we care about results. People only care about them, ca people caring about them so much. If they don't see the positive result ending for their situation, they're, they're never going to respect or care about you as much as you think yes. they would. So yeah. that's how the slogan happened is it took a long time, but it did. It because I had to really dive deep into who we are and we are people and result oriented team. And, and I, I think that I, describes our team to a T to a T there's really nothing. Yeah. I mean, we we've for 2021, we're changing all our writing everywhere. We have these long descriptions and we're cutting them short to back to our slogan because mm -hmm. that's, that's who we are. And we we're going to stick to it for a while until, some epiphany comes to our minds that is better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think those are all the questions yeah. that I think we have. If anyone, you know, is, I think, interested in real estate, have any questions about it, like Ina said, feel free to comment still, send us a message on our personal pages, on our, we have a distinct home group Facebook page that you can send a message to and we'll definitely see them. Yep. We're also on LinkedIn, pretty heavy right now. And this year... I'm so actually not excited, a little nervous, but my daughter's very excited. We're going to be on TikTok. Nice. <laughs> you know we're going down if we're starting to do TikTok. <laughs> Wait till those videos come. But TikTok is coming in 2021 um, that I'm a little nervous and excited at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, if you're interested in becoming a realtor, mm -hmm. Interested in any way joining our team for different opportunities because we have a lot of different positions that are, are going to be available um, in 2021. Definitely um, reach out to us. We are here to to help, and we're just so excited. And I'm sorry it took us so long, but this was like a very passionate topic. It's so. a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a wrap. Cass, have a great weekend. Yes. Love you doing too. This. Love doing this with you. Thank you for interviewing me and and sharing and our stories. Share stories. Yep. All right. It's a wrap. Peace out. Have a good weekend.